Wars have always been horrible. Even in the times when they were using elephants instead of jets and drones. But there was one thing different. Those war, wars had a need. It's no longer the case. When a conflict uh, in this now, the killing doesn't stop. Because every conflict leaves behind unexploded ordnance in landmines. It was early 1980s when I was a child and the conflict had just begun. For the first time, I heard the term landmine from my father. One day at home, he mentioned that the war has begun, the soldiers are using landmines, and when the conflict is over, landmines can be dangerous for the local people. Those days were different. We were not familiar, Afghans were not familiar with the term landmine. But today is different. If you ask children, they will be able to explain to you what is a landmine, what is la uh, unexploded ordnance, what is a rocket, and what is an artillery. It's good from one side, that they are aware is good for their protection. But it's a bad indicator that it shows the problem is so huge. It's everywhere. When I was 19 years old, our family decided to leave Afghanistan because of wars. We became refugees. I was hoping to continue my education, but I couldn't. I had to earn money, I had to work. I heard of, about the demining course in Pakistan. The United Nations had just launched in order to train some Afghan refugees there to clear landmines in Afghanistan. I heard about it, I went, and there I learned about landmines. I it was not just one landmine when I had heard from my father. There were so many different types. In order to pass the course, I was struggling how to memorize those names. They were anti-tank mines, anti-personnel landmines, you know, like uh, TC6 made in Italy, MK7 made in the United Kingdom, Type 72 made in China, PMN, PMN2, made in Russia. So all those countries had produced landmines and they sent it to Afghanistan to be used during the conflicts. In this course, we also learned how to find a landmine. But it was a soft ground. And soon we would deploy to field to work on the actual minefields. The reality was different. We didn't find any soft ground. The minefields were difficult. They were dangerous. We had very limited experience. We didn't have the right tools and equipment. Anyone, we didn't have body armor. We didn't have personal protective equipment. We were 21 people that together we started. But in a couple of years, most of our colleagues were either killed or injured. I was also injured in 1993 when I was working in a minefield, an anti-personnel landmine detonated, and I got some injuries in my face. And there are some, some fragments in my forehead, in my air, in my chest. I was lucky to survive. It was very difficult condition. The job was dangerous. Almost in every field mission, we were, when we were spending seven weeks in the field and then we were going home for a few days on rest, in every field mission, one of our, at least one of our colleagues was either killed or injured. 
I still remember the sad story of our first colleague who lost his life. We were working in Ghazni province, a village called Bandesarde. When we went there, there were so many minefields. They were not marked. The mines were visible. And we were new. So our colleague, he was so enthusiastic to finish the job quickly. Every day, he was finding a lot of mine and destroying them. But one day, a mine detonated. He lost both of his hands, both of his eyes, and he, had a, he got a very deep injury in his thigh. We had to evacuate him. We were 18 hours away from the nearest accessible hospital. We couldn't take him to the Ghazni Center because of fear of being arrested because the Russian-backed government was still in power. I remember his words. He said, I'm not going to survive. My injuries are serious. But remember one word from me. Until the last mine from the soil of Afghanistan is removed, please continue your work. I will not forget those words. I take that he was also mentioning the unexploded ordinance. Unexploded ordinance is also a sad reality. We knew that they are very dangerous. Some of them can be just, uh, detonated with a very lightest touch. But we didn't know that the problem is so huge. The conflicts had left millions of them in thousands of communities in Afghanistan. They are very dangerous compared to landmines in terms of killing. Imagine if an artillery shell is, God forbid, detonated in the middle of this room. Everybody sitting within 5 to 10 meters will lose his life, his or her life. World Bank did a study in 2001. And they concluded that in those years, there were 16 casualties per day because of landmines and explosive remnants of war. There are 120,000 people registered. And now, every month, there are 100 new cases reported. This is, the only, is not the only consequ consequence of landmines and explosive remnants of war. There are many other impacts. One of them is fear. It creates a lot of fear. Because there is no information, none of the warring factions left, left behind maps and records. Imagine if you are working in your garden and you found a landmine or an exploded ordinance. Do you think you will be able to continue working there? You don't know. There might be more. So the, the same way it in, impacts the development in Afghanistan. The first railway of Afghanistan, which is built in Balkh province, was first cleared from landmines. And then they managed to finish that project. The power line project was first had to be cleared from landmines and explosive remnants of war. In terms of casualties, 72% of the casualties are caused by unexploded ordnance. The program has made significant progress with the old contamination. More than 17 million landmines and explosive remnants of war have been destroyed. More than 16 million of them were unexploded ordnance. That shows that the conflicts leave behind millions of explosive remnants of war. And the conflicts have just have begun in 2001. It's still going on. For sure, have left millions of unexploded ordnance. On the international level, progress has been made. In, made. in 1999, mine ban treaty came into existing. Landmines, anti-personal landmines were banned. Cluster munitions are brand, uh, banned. And also, um, there are 86 countries that they have committed to clear unexploded ordnance based on another convention. This is one of the village in Kandahar. 
This is just one, one example of thousands of conflicts in Afghanistan. When the conflicts happen, the bombs like this can be left behind. And it is, it is a problem for, for, for many years to come. The unexploded ordnance are not just a problem in the battlefields. It's also a big problem in the military training areas. In Afghanistan, Afghan forces and NATO military forces contaminated huge amount of land in their uh, training areas. This map is showing the locations of uh, those uh, training areas that are contaminated. It took us two years of lobbying in order to get this. It took us two years f to convince uh, NATO forces to clear their firing ranges. These dots look smaller. <coughs> Most of them are very big. One of them in Helmand is even bigger than Washington, D.C. We wanted to get the information about all the areas where conflict has happened and the possibility of unexploded ordnance are there. But we have been told that this information is classified. I, I would like to use this opportunity and if there are some, someone from the NATO forces or the uh, Afghan military forces, that can, they can trust us. Other internationals have done so. I don't think this information should be classified. There is no reason for that. The war is over. The troops are leaving. Maybe they don't understand how important this information is. If this information is not provided to the mine action sector for every site that we need to, uh, to identify, to, to learn, somebody should lose his life. And that's why it took us 25 years to clear 80% of the contamination left behind from old conflicts. I mean from the conflicts from uh, before 2001. Nobody left behind information. Uh, every month we are uh, discovering uh, previously unrecorded areas. I'm sure if we had the information, it would have taken a couple of years to clear all areas uh, in Afghanistan. And we wouldn't have any, any landmine problem anymore. And the international forces, the local, the local forces, they are here to protect people. But they are leaving behind millions of unexploded ordnance that will kill people for years to come. And also, we should remember that this is not a problem just in Afghanistan. Wherever the conflict is going on now and will happen in the future, Unexploded ordnance will be left behind. And this problem can be solved. We have proven that by clearing thousands of minefields in Afghanistan, finding millions of unexploded ordnance in landmines. Unless we go back to the era where elephants were used, this problem will continue. Thank you very much. <laughs>